Hi guys, Joe Garth here, creator of Brushify.io. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about Runtime Virtual Texturing, or RVT. Virtual texturing is quite technical and it actually allows us to do quite a few different things. Uh, it's not just a feature for landscapes, for instance, it can also be used to interact with other objects and create effects in certain different ways. For the landscape, its primary use is to reduce overdraw. Your GPU is continually trying to update the landscape all the time. Uh, that's why when you go into the sort of shader overdraw of the landscape, you can actually see that it's turning red if you paint down lots of paint, paint layers. And that means that it's layers and layers and layers that the GPU is basically having to process. So what RVT is doing is it's basically taking all of that end resulting information and it's basically moving that uh, into memory into the form of a texture it's basically baking it into a texture and because it's baked into a texture it's going to be using up some texture memory on your GPU but it's going to mean that the GPU itself isn't actually having to do the work of processing that shader in real time so you actually win quite a lot of performance in terms of FPS, so long as you have that GPU memory available. Uh, and, and that's really the advantage of a virtual texture. And this obviously, I'm applying this example to landscapes and uh, landscapes is one of its primary uses, but it can also be applied to other shaders and other materials as well. Um, Obviously Brushify is very landscape oriented, so for the most part in this video, I'm going to be talking about RVT in relation to landscapes and Brushify itself. The other thing that virtual texturing actually allows us to do is because we've now taken all that shader information and we've baked that into this virtual texture, we're now able to take that virtual texture and actually apply that to objects in the world. So, for instance, we can take the landscape texture and we can actually use that texture to blend in objects in the world to make them look like they're blending in with the landscape correctly. Uh, so, I mean, this example you can see right now, this is basically, uh, you can see that how the sort of uh, sand texture here is kind of blending into these rocks. Um, and, you know, this is a sort of a typical use case of this. The other thing that you can do is actually bake uh, information into the virtual texture that's not from the landscape. For instance, you can use road splines and you can actually take those splines and bake that imagery into the virtual texture. And this is something that v Brushify supports as well. So all of these different uh, features and methods are now supported by Brushify's landscape auto material and the near mesh uh, material that comes with Brushify as well. So pretty much you can apply these RVT features to any Brushify scene, any scene that you create with the Brushify shaders. And uh, I think this is really a great step forward, a great direction. And uh, yeah, I'm just really happy that finally I can uh, launch Brushify with RVT and uh, you guys can start using it. All right, so now we know a little bit more about RVT. I'm gonna jump right into the engine and uh, let's show you guys how you can actually set up RVT and use that with Brushify. The first thing I'm gonna do is get the Brushify environment shaders pack and add that to my project. And if you do the same, you should end up with the exact same configuration that I have in this video. So if I go into this uh, empty project here, go up to content, uh, you'll find in the content folder, a uh, folder called Brushify. And I'm going to load up uh, the, if I go into the maps folder, runtime virtual texture, I'm gonna load up this little level called RVT example. On initially loading the level, first thing you'll want to make sure is that you've got virtual texturing enabled in the project settings. So if we go to edit project settings, and just type in, usually just type in virtual. Just scroll down a little bit here and find it in engine rendering virtual textures. And just make sure that you've got enable virtual texture support enabled and leave all the other stuff at the default settings. And yeah, once that's done, make sure you restart if it tells you to restart. And uh, then you can just load this level up and you should get exactly what I have here. And you can actually use the uh, the number keys one, two, and three on your keyboard to jump to these different bookmarks. Um, so as you can see on the landscape, 
we've got a bunch of different sort of paint layers painted down. We've got some snow here, we've got a desert here, um, we've got some sand, and you know, all of these different paint layers usually would contribute to a lot of overdraw. Uh, so what I'm gonna do to demonstrate this, I'm gonna click on the landscape and I'm gonna go to my MI landscape material and just go inside of there. And you can see now, this is a material that contains all the parameters for this landscape. Uh, and I'm gonna scroll down to uh, where it says runtime virtual texture and at the moment it's enabled. So I'm gonna disable it. And it just has to recompile a few of the shaders there uh, just to allow us to see the landscape without virtual texturing. Okay, so this is the exact same landscape without any uh, virtual texturing, so no RVT at all. And you can see it looks exactly the same. The only difference is that when we go up to the lit menu, we're gonna to go to optimization view modes and we're gonna go shader complexity view mode. You can also use Alt-8 on your keyboard as well. And here you can see that the landscape itself is now completely red in this one area where we've painted down a lot of those paint layers. You can see this area on the left a little bit less complex, but for the most part, everything's gone red in that, that little area where we've painted down quite a lot of stuff. Now, the shade has done quite a good job here because it's, it's really optimized the rest of it uh, because that's only using a single paint layer. Um, but in those areas where you've got lots of things painted down in a single, um, a single grid, uh, it's going to end up contributing a lot to your overdraw. And this is actually something that RVT actually prevents. So if you do actually have the GPU memory available, uh, you're actually going to be saving a few milliseconds uh, in your frame times. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually enable RVT and I'll show you the difference that this makes to the overdraw. So back to shader complexity and we're going to turn on RVT. And now with RVT on, you can see that everything has gone green across the whole landscape. But we still have all of our paint layers down. So effectively, this means that all of this, all of these different things painted down are completely free. Uh, now, one thing that is uh, interesting to note is you can actually still do uh, some painting with RVT on. So for instance, if I want to paint the landscape here, you can see that I can actually still paint uh, the landscape and edit the landscape uh, with RVT enabled. So it's actually not um, going to have any problems there uh, with editing and, and using uh, RVT as a level editor. You know, you can just leave RVT enabled and you're going to get the best of both worlds. The performance is going to be really good and you're also going to be able to sort of paint and sculpt in real time. So that's really the beauty of, of using Brushify in this way. Uh, you can also use RVT alongside the level editor tools. So another thing that we can do is if we just come to our second bookmark here, I'm just gonna hit two on the keyboard, is we can actually use RVT uh, to blend objects into the landscape. Uh, so in this example, you can see how these rocks are actually being uh, sort of blended into the, into the landscape itself. And you've got the actual landscape texture sort of appearing on the rocks. Uh, and that's because we've got this sort of baked virtual texture. We can actually apply that in the object's material. Uh, so to do that, in order to actually change these settings, we can go into the material instance for this rock, for instance. And I'm just going to drag this window in. And if we scroll all the way down, so these are all the parameters for the rock. If we scroll all the way down, we can find a little uh, tick box here called uh, in the RVT section called Blend Object with Virtual Texture. And if I just untick this, uh, you can see how the objects would look without the RVT, bl uh, RVT blending. So you can really see what this, uh, this blending feature does. And you can actually change the uh, blending amount. Uh, you can also sort of tweak the uh, distance at which it blends and use that to sort of change um, how much blending occurs. 
and I think this is really nice because you know you can just play around with the uh, the amounts here and the sort of fall off and you can even completely cover an object um, with the virtual texture if you want so you know really just completely hide them and embed them completely in the in the landscape uh, for now I'm just gonna leave these at sort of something something like that I think I think that looks decent um, and yeah so the way that this actually works is that this is actually just a material function so if I go inside of the actual master material it's called the near mesh master material from brushify and inside of this near mesh master material uh, you can see we've got you know some well it's quite a clean setup we've got the base textures here in a function uh, we've got this uh, detail mapping function um, we've got sort of effects for biome stuff so like you can put snow on the objects and things like that um, and all of these are sort of nicely uh, cordoned off and commented um, we've even got this sort of distance shrinking that's uh, similar to the sort of distance shrinking from Fortnite. so when objects go into the distance they gradually fade and sort of shrink away um, so yeah and object blending the usual object blending there as well um, but you can see right at the very end of the chain, after this material attributes node, we've got this MFRVT blending uh, function. And inside of here is basically where all of the parameters and sort of code is for the actual blending uh, for RVT itself. Uh, so what's good about this is it means that we can actually take uh, this little bit of code here and we can actually copy that into any other uh, material um, in Unreal Engine 4. So for instance, I can take a Megascans asset. Let me just grab one from my library here. And I think I'll use this Lava Spire, um, which is actually the same one uh, I was using in Rebirth. And it's my old friend. So I'm gonna use that as an example piece. And what we can do is we can just basically uh, well, we can see that we basically have the typical problem, this really harsh line around the base. Uh, but what we can actually do is, if I go into the material instance down here, open that guy up. I'm just going to bring this across. And right down at the very bottom, um, you can find this MS default material. This is the Megascans default material. So I'm just going to open up that material. And inside, you'll see a sort of pretty typical... Um, let me just grab this and move this around so you can see it. So this is the typical sort of standard master material that comes with Megascans. And it's really a basic one. It's just albedo and uh, some other parameters that are basically fed into the material itself. Um, so what we're going to actually do is we're actually going to convert this um, into uh, a completely different setup using material attributes. Uh, so in order to do that, just simply go to your result node and click use material attributes and we're going to move this across over here and then we're going to go back to this uh, near mesh master the brushify near mesh master material uh, you'll find that inside of brushify materials and then it's near mesh master and uh, all you need to do is just grab these two nodes the make material attributes node and the rvt blending node copy those we're going to paste these across into the megascans material and then we're just simply going to hook up uh, all of these different parameters uh, to our make material attributes node. So we're going to hook up the base color, the metallic. We're going to hook up the specular and the roughness. And then finally, we're going to hook up the normals. So now you can see we've basically hooked everything up to the material attributes. And the next step is just simply to take the result from the RVT blending and hook that up to the result node. And that just goes right into material attributes. And really that's just about it. Now we've got uh, a Megascans material that's upgraded with the Brushify RVT blending function. And we're just gonna hit save. And I'm just gonna move that out of the way. And if we now come to the uh, material instance right here, just bring this in so you guys can see it. Uh, we've now got some new parameters right here at the very bottom of the pre of the material instance. And they're actually the exact same parameters that we had in the Brushify near mesh material. So we can just tick this bo uh, little box here, 
blend object with a, a virtual texture. Tick the box and there we go. Now we have uh, the same RVT blending taking place on Megascan's assets. And uh, yeah, we can again just change the, the blending a little bit, tweak everything to uh, our heart's content basically. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is the sort of typical way that we can add this feature onto any uh, material in Unreal Engine 4. Doesn't have to be Megascans, doesn't have to be Brushify, can be your own material, can be something you got from the marketplace. But yeah, as long as you sort of follow this same um, setup right here, just make a material attributes node, uh, run that through my MFRVT blending node, and uh, the Brushify node will basically take care of all of the RVT blending stuff. Uh, the third scene that we can see here is a little test scene. Um, doesn't look very impressive because there's not really any road texture on the spline, um, but this is made just to showcase the fact that you can actually use uh, RVT to actually add objects to the virtual texture. So what you can see is that if I actually zoom in here, uh, we can actually get down to this road here. And uh, what's happened is that the road, the actual spline, has actually baked itself into the landscape. Um, so this isn't actually a mesh or anything. It's more like it's sort of acting like a decal, um, which is really awesome uh, because it means that you actually don't need to sort of really carefully place the road meshes anymore. Uh, so if I go into modes, landscape, and I just go to uh, splines, we can now manage the spline and actually see what's going on. So what I'm gonna do is, if I actually even move the spline up, uh, you can see that wherever I move the spline to uh, is basically going to be updated in the virtual texture, which is really awesome. Um, but another thing we can do, if we just go to segments and just scroll down here on segments, we can go to this virtual texturing section. I'm just gonna plus that out. And we can change this uh, drop down here to uh, different settings. So I'm just going to check check virtual texture and main pass. And what that's going to do is actually render the original spline mesh uh, as well as the virtual texture. So what I can do now is I can pull this control up and you can see what's actually happening here. So what Unreal Engine is doing is it's actually taking the mesh of the spline and it's directly just projecting that into the virtual texture. So as I move around the mesh, the virtual texture gets updated. Really cool. And obviously this is just a test sort of example, uh, but this is actually something that works on real road splines as well. Uh, so if you actually get the, you know, one of the Brushify road packs, like the Brushify natural roads pack or the country roads pack, uh, then you can actually use this technology on those roads uh, and obviously it will look a lot better than this. So if you do actually happen to own the Brushify Country Roads or Natural Roads packs, uh, you'll actually get a much nicer example of this. Um, and you can see that this is basically uh, some of the road splines from Country Roads and uh, they're actually... Um, nicely embedded into the landscape here. You can see they're sort of smoothly transitioning um, into the virtual texture. Uh, and that's because translucency uh, actually works. And this is actually just a sort of texture projection. So if I go up to the landscape panel uh, and then I go into uh, the spline right here, move this spline around, you can see that this is actually projected into the landscape texture itself. And uh, the other thing that's really, really cool here as well, if I just disable the uh, grass, just gonna disable the show flag for grass, uh, you can see that there's a perfect blend uh, and sort of translucent blend into this uh, material here. So yeah, there are definitely some advantages to uh, having RVT on the splines. Uh, and I just wanted to show that uh, this uh, this can be applied to sort of real world uh, examples and, and cases where uh, you've got real uh, sort of nice looking textures and uh, 
and proper scenes really and that's really just because i, I think the the stuff that's in the uh, rvt example level in environment shaders doesn't really do this technology justice um, because it's really possible to get um, really nice rendering out of rvt splines Okay, so now we've tackled sort of roads and I've sort of described how you can use the RVT technology to kind of project uh, splines into the landscape virtual texture. Um, what we can actually do now is uh, get to a slightly more complicated topic. So we have got all of these things working here in this landscape uh, little, you know, sort of example level um, and you can see them all working. Uh, now the question is, how do you actually get all of these features and this kind of setup working in your own level? Uh, so the next thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up uh, RVT from scratch in uh, a completely blank, you know, different level, uh, and uh, we're going to see exactly how to do it. Uh, and the level that I'm going to be using uh, to do this is going to be the Brushify Mountains pack. So I've just added the mountains pack to this project. So I'm going to go up to content, Brushify, maps, and uh, you can see in here mountains. And I'm going to load up the mountains level. Okay, so this is the Brushify mountains pack level. And uh, yeah, as you can see, performance is already pretty good. Uh, so to really showcase you know, what RVT can do, uh, we're going to actually sh uh, slow it down a little bit uh, intentionally. Uh, so I'm going to go up to the lit menu here and I'm going to go to optimization view modes, shader complexity. And as you can see right now, we're still in, you know, we're almost still in the green. So what we want to do is add a few more paint layers to this level to really sort of bog it down. Uh, and we're going to set up the RVT in this level from scratch. So first thing I'm going to do is go up to landscape and let's just go really crazy. Let's go beach biome and just start painting down some uh, some random paint layers in you know maybe like a single area I'm just going to make little blobs nothing too artistic because this is really just a technical demonstration uh, grass but the idea here is just to sort of bog down the level and the rendering uh, with lots of multiple paint layers uh, sort of scattered around the map and uh as many as we can, especially in like a sort of small area, um, just to make this look uh, totally red in our shader of a draw. Uh, what else can we add? More puddles, just puddles, random stuff. Okay, cool. So now let's take a look at our uh, shader of a draw. Okay, perfect. So now if we look on our target here, we can see that we're a little bit closer to the red. You really do have to paint down quite a lot of paint layers though in order to get performance that's really bad. And to be honest, a bit of red isn't actually ter so terrible for performance. We're still at 220 frames per second right here in this level. You have to do an awful lot to really get this landscape uh, auto material to slow down. Uh, and most of the time, it's really not the landscape auto material that's causing performance problems. Mostly, it just seems to be that whenever people see red in the shader complexity view, they just assume that that's what's causing their performance problems. Most of the time, it's usually caused by excessive draw calls or poly counts, um, usually less likely to be poly counts, uh, or it's caused by just simply really crazy high lighting settings. Some people really go crazy with the number of cascades, shadows, and and that kind of stuff. Or ray tracing, it seems that everybody automatically decides that they can support ray tracing in their uh, projects and they enable it. Uh, or some people just don't even know that ray tracing is on um, and they're you know, running uh, scenes and, and finding they have problems. Uh, so yeah, definitely just look into other things before you immediately leap to the conclusion that uh, your, um, your optimization problems are all stemming from the landscape material because really the landscape material is some super light shader if we actually go into the mi landscape uh you can actually see the number of instructions on this uh shader and it's only 118 instructions or so here um and yeah that's that's with like a bunch of different stuff actually enabled so we actually have reduced tiling turned on and 
Uh, we have the snow cover. So I would just say that before you leap to the conclusion that your performance problems are caused by shader complexity on the landscape, that maybe you should investigate other uh, issues with your scenes because it's just very unlikely to be uh, the landscape causing really severe uh, performance drops. For the purpose of this demonstration, uh, let's try to make this area completely green. Uh, so in order to do that, we're going to need to set up some stuff in the level. So what I'm going to do is go up to place actors, type virtual, and then I'm going to drag this virtual texture volume, runtime virtual texture volume into the scene. And what this is, is this little box. And we can basically scroll up here and uh, you see where it says source actor. You'll want to just pick the landscape. And then we're going to click copy rotation and copy bounds. And what this will do is basically give our volume the same bounds as the landscape. I'm just going to hide the uh, set dressing here so you can really see this. And uh, yeah, so now you can see that basically our landscape has got the exact same bounds as this big box, uh, which means our virtual texture will have those same bounds. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is actually assign the virtual texture. So go to the content browser. We're going to go to Brushify, Materials, Landscape, Functions, RVT, and then in Virtual Textures, you'll find VT underscore Landscape Example and just drag and drop that to the virtual texture slot. The next thing we need to do is click on the terrain itself. And we need to scroll down in the details panel till we find virtual texture and hit the little plus. Then you'll want to go to the content browser again and drag the VT underscore landscape example there as well. And for the landscape, that's pretty much everything that you need to set up. There is one thing to note, which is that these virtual textures are actually defined inside of the landscape shader itself. And I'll just quickly show you where those are defined. So if you do want to create your own custom runtime virtual textures uh, and have them in a different folder or somewhere, you'll need to make sure that you reassign them in the shader. And to do that, just go to Brushify, Materials, and then Landscape, M underscore Landscape. I'm just going to drag that out. And uh, right here, you can see this is the Brushify landscape auto material. And if we come right to the end to this runtime virtual texture section, you'll find a material function called MFRVT landscape. If you go inside that landscape material function, RVT landscape, and you find the runtime virtual texture sample, basically you'll find these samples where you need to assign the virtual texture to the sample. So if you do decide to have your own custom virtual texture, make sure you assign it there to the sample and save the shader. Okay, so that's basically everything set up for the landscape and that's pretty much all you need to do for setting up the landscape itself. Uh, I'm gonna leap to my bookmark and I'm gonna turn on the set dressing again. And if I click on the landscape now and I scroll to the landscape material, and I'm gonna open that material instance up then if I scroll down on the material instance till I find runtime virtual texture, then I'm going to tick this little tick box here, use runtime virtual texture, and it should just compile a little bit. Now, once it's done compiling, we've actually got virtual textures being displayed. And uh, in order to really show that that's the case, we can go to the lit menu, go to our shader complexity, and you can now see everything is green. There is one slight problem though, which is that the uh, landscape isn't rendering correctly right now. So the reason that's happening is because the virtual texture doesn't know what size our landscape is. So we're going to need to tell it what size it is. So I'm going to go into the landscape details panel and I'm going to check what size our landscape is. And at the moment, our landscape is a 1000 by 1000 landscape. So I'm going to come into VT MIP distance. And if I actually hover over uh, this value, you can see that there are actually some reference values for what this number needs to be set to for different landscape resolutions. So I'm going to tick this option to allow us to edit it. And I'm going to set my value to 16 because that's the reference value for about a thousand by a thousand. 
So now you can see that the texture has changed and the sort of texture LOD distances are now more closely resembling what we had before without RVT. And actually, if I turn off RVT now and just compare, they're a little bit more comparable. Uh, but we do have the added benefit of a completely green shader complexity. So that's with RVT on, and this is with RVT off. So you can see that big red patch that we had there has now completely gone green. Now, the other thing that we can do uh, is we can actually turn on the RVT object blending. And I think this rock here is a really perfect example of this. Uh, but if we go into the rock material instance right now and try to enable RVT, uh, it's not going to work. I'll just show that. So if we tick this box, nothing's going to happen. And the reason for that is the RVT doesn't actually, the RVT system doesn't actually know uh, what height this object is at. So we're going to need to create another virtual texture for the height. So I'm just going to name my runtime virtual texture volume something else. I'm going to call it VT underscore landscape. And then I'm going to duplicate VT landscape. Just uh, hit control W or hit duplicate, edit duplicate. And instead of VT landscape two, I'm going to call it VT underscore height. Then inside of the content browser, I'm just going to navigate to Brushify, Materials, Landscape, Functions, RVT, Virtual Textures again. And I'm going to drag and drop the VT height uh, virtual texture now onto the virtual texture slot. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the landscape and I'm going to scroll down. Don't worry if the landscape ever sort of flickers like that when you're using the user interface in the editor. Uh, it's just pretty common and it doesn't happen in runtime. Uh, if you go to the virtual texture here and in render to virtual textures, we're going to add another element. And we're also going to go to the content browser again and we're going to drag and drop VT height to that. And you can see there, there's a little preview and we can see there's actually a height map in the preview. Uh, now, if we go to the object, because we've already enabled RVT blending, uh, you can see it's already working. But for instance, if I just disable it and re-enable it, you can now see that there is uh, proper blending happening on this object. And it's actually taking um, the landscape texture onto it. So yeah, and then you've got the controls right here for the blend amount and you know all of the other uh, parameters um, that you had before. So yeah, that's really in a nutshell how you can add RVT onto any of your own levels. You just pretty much follow these exact same steps uh, and that's how you can get uh, really optimized landscapes and use the RVT blending as well. So the last thing that I want to show you is adding a spline to this scene. So now we've got RVT on the landscape and we've got the RVT blending going. Uh, last thing I'll do is just add this little spline and show you how to do that. So come to modes panel, landscape, and then you'll want to click on splines right here on the uh, top bar here. And I'm just going to go and add a few different spline points by control clicking. And this will add the spline points. Uh, on the right here, you can see in the details panel, there is a, uh, a button called control points. And if I click that, it will select all of these control points. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tweak the uh, width of this. So I'm going to turn the half width to 200 and the side fall off to 200 as well. And now you can see our road is a lot uh, narrower. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually click on segments. Uh, and then I'm going to come to the left side here where it says tool settings and deform landscape to splines. I'm going to click only selected. So I'm going to go into the segments and I'm going to assign a spline mesh. So if you come down into the details panel where it says spline meshes, and we're just going to hit the little plus here to add an element. And then inside of there, you can see there's a slot for the mesh. So I'm going to hit the magnifying glass to go to the content browser. And inside of engine content, 
uh, basic shapes. I'm going to assign the plane. And yeah, really now you can see the issue. So we've basically got the problem that this plane is just going to uh, it's just going to clip straight through the landscape. It's not going to really project any of the texture uh, that's on it. Uh, I'm just going to go back to splines again. And here we can actually assign a material override uh, to this plane. So I'm going to assign the same one that I assigned in the RVT example level. So that's inside of content, brushify, maps, runtime virtual texture, and then assets. And it's just called MI road instance. And now you can see that we've actually got the texture on the road. And uh, yeah, so basically we're ready to start projecting this virtual texture into the landscape. Uh, in order to do that, just scroll down again, and you'll find another shelf called virtual texture. And we're just going to add another little plus here to add an element to the array. And we're going to assign the virtual texture that's inside of Brushify, Materials, Landscape, Functions, RVT, Virtual Textures. And we're going to drag and drop the VT landscape example onto that slot. So now you can see we're starting to get somewhere. Uh, we've actually got a part of our texture, our mesh, baked into the virtual texture. And if we go to this uh, parameter here, virtual texture pass type, and change that to virtual texture only, then we should, in theory, only see the virtual texture itself. So if I change this again, you can see this is the real model, the real mesh. And if I change that to virtual texture only, that disappears and we now only see the virtual texture itself and the road is being projected into it. And now I can actually take this spline and, and move it around and you'll see it's actually a part of the virtual texture now. And it doesn't matter where I move it up and down uh, on the z-axis, I can move that anywhere I like. It will always project straight down. So you won't get this um, you know, sort of horrible issue where uh, you basically have to uh, continually try to um, find a way to get your mesh to basically clip into the landscape. So, you know, usually I'd be in a situation like this if I try and do it without virtual textures. I've just deleted the virtual texture there, and you can see how hard it would be for me to actually get this to conform to the landscape. I have to do all kinds of of tricks here and in general what I do in the Brushify packs is I actually have a custom mesh uh, with sort of dithering on the sides and sort of object blending and I'm doing all sorts of sort of shader tricks uh, to try to get the mesh to integrate into the landscape. So really that's the benefit of virtual texture is just being able to straight away um, project the road directly into the landscape, not have to worry about meshes, clipping, and uh, you know, or having to do any kind of weird shader tricks uh, to get them to conform to the landscape. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this little video. Uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. If you find this content interesting, you can go to www.brushify.io forward slash bootcamp uh, to follow the tutorial series of which this will be a part of. Um, so yeah, Brushify Bootcamp, it's a good place to sort of learn how to use the Brushify shaders and that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I think that's about everything from my side. Thanks a lot for listening and uh, take it easy. Cheers guys. Bye bye.